I'm Alfredo Cuadros, and welcome to Inside RGB Politics, where we talk about local issues affecting the Rio Grande Valley. From the impeachment inquiry to the future of young political parties, join us as we go beyond the headlines for a closer look at the issues affecting our region. And now, KVEO-TV and Local 23 News present Inside RGV Politics. We begin with the local election cycle, where more races across the Upper Valley focused in a change of leadership. The city of La Jolla's mayor's race is headed for a runoff. Challenger and former police chief Isidro Casanova receiving 48% of the votes. Incumbent Mayor Fito Salinas receiving 34% of the votes. Nine out of ten propositions in the ballot across the state passed. You can find more details on our website. That's kveo.com. In Cameron County, a record number of eligible voters registered for the 2020 election. Now, efforts underway to have 95% registered. I sat down with the elections administrator on how they accomplished this feat. Take a look. Is that normal this, this time of year? Or? Well, we always see an increase in voter registration, but this summer we saw a constant stream of people uh, out there registering, uh, whether it was through uh, advocates uh, and different groups or even people just renewing their driver's license at DPS. We, we saw a lot more uh, applications coming in through that process. 209,000, is, is that a big deal for Cameron County? Is this yeah, it's, um, it's, it's the highest number we've had. Uh, every day we're breaking that historic record. Uh, we usually maintained a, a registration uh, database of about 185 to 186,000 registered voters. But four years ago, we started a new push uh, in order to get that number up. Um, we felt that there were a lot more people out there who just hadn't made the connection uh, with our office. Um, you know, there's we ex we anticipated there was about 240,000 registered people or people who were eligible to be registered in, in Cameron County, and um, so we decided that we were going to try to get to at least a 95 percent of the eligible citizens actually registered. Uh, we saw another county in Texas do that, and so we felt like it was an achievable goal. Um, and since then, you know, we've added approximately uh, 20,000 new registered voters. Um, you know, and each year, uh, every other year, we lose uh, through the suspense and, and through the purge, we lose a group. And so actually, we made those individuals up, and now we're actually adding above and beyond that. By made up, uh, and I know, oh. uh, yeah, like where, where are they coming from? Well, um, we think that there's a lot of young voters that, that are that are coming in place, and then people who just haven't been engaged or just who felt that uh, for their own reasons they didn't want to register to vote. Uh, they felt like either that it would put them on the jury wheel or it would do things like that, which isn't the case any longer. Um, they weren't uh, signing up. But I think now people are, you know, more aware of what's happening on a political level, and they feel like their voices need to be heard in these upcoming elections. I know we talked a little bit uh, briefly. Uh, you also have a goal to 220. Yes, it's part the the Grow the Vote pro project uh, has an ultimate goal of having 220 re registered voters. Sorry, uh, has an ultimate goal of having 220,000 registered voters by the 2020 presidential election. Hmm. What have you been doing specifically for, for the push? Is this a campaign modeled after another campaign? Or? Well, um, we've been working uh, much more closely with our uh, community uh, grassroots organizations. Uh, we've done everything we can to make ourselves a resource for them so that they have you know, the registration cards, that they, they know what areas might uh, be a location that, that there's people who need to be registered. Uh, we've been working with the colleges. Uh, we've been working with you know, uh, Texas Rising. We've been working with Mono Mano, Su Clinica Familiar, uh, the Vaquero Votes Program, uh, the League of Women Voters. Um, we've also, you know, started pushing things on Facebook. We started a social media presence that we didn't have before. Part of the initiative that we have is to get voter information out as well, uh, not just to make registration available, but also to let people know what's coming up. Uh, we've gone to National Lights Out, we've gone to libraries, we go into county buildings. We go everywhere we can just so that people don't necessarily have to look hard for us.